loans, get rid of mortgage insurance, or get cash out, find out about your best refinance options by tuning into the Get Mortgage Fit radio show with Alex Michaels and Carrie Kasem. Thursday afternoons from 1 to 2, where you'll learn everything you need to know about mortgage loans, today's rates, FHA, VA, and more. Call the Get Mortgage Fit show Thursday afternoons from 1 to 2 on WNN at 800-827-RATE. 800-827-RATE or visit them online at newamericanfunding.com and MLS 6606. Now you can get Talk 1470 WNN on 95.3 FM2. Loud and clear, health and wealth radio, WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Are you ready? It is your time to take a few moments from your busy day to unwind, be inspired, and listen to the psychic insights of your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elis, a top 100 psychic, speaker, and author. Off air, be sure to connect with Hallie at HallieElise.com. And now, The Hallie Elise Show. Welcome, everyone. How are you? (laughs) Nice to be here this evening. I was thinking about this evening's show, and I was thinking about the fact that I get so many calls about romance, so many calls about, well, he did this or she did that, and what do I do about it? How do I change it? I want to bring something up here that I think is really important. How often... Do you think about what the other person did or didn't do instead of why you're not feeling content, why you're not happy? Meaning, we have to be accountable for our own actions. We know that. And yet, when we're in a romantic relationship, when the partner, the other person doesn't do what it is that we're expecting or assuming that they'll take care of, we seem to have issue with it. And I'm going to give an example. I'm not talking about the little things. I'm not speaking in respect to, oh, well, Sam didn't take out the trash or, well, Tina didn't come to bed till 11 o'clock at night. And at that point, I'm not amorous. That's not what I'm talking about. And those may not seem like little things, but those are things that are easy enough to modify. I'm speaking in terms of, as we get older, so many people are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, we'll say 40 on up. And they want romance. They want to have a long-lasting relationship. They want to have that partner that they trust, that they perhaps can live the rest of their days with. Now, there's no guarantees, of course. Though, when someone says they are going to be in your life, and you purchase a home together, and you move in together, should you allow that other person's family to interfere? Now, really give some thought to this. I remember going way back, I probably was 14, 15 years old. I remember a conversation about this couple who had been together for a long time and the mother-in-law on the husband's side, so his mother, kept calling, kept interfering, kept saying what she thought should happen, how they should do things, what should take place. And... The husband said, yes, and told his wife, my mother says we should do this, we should do that. Obviously, it was a bit more than that. But the gist, he allowed somebody else to come between him and his spouse. They inevitably broke up. Very sad, because they had something. And yet, she got to a point where she said, you know, just can't do this anymore. I don't want another person in my relationship. Let's look at it at the other end. You have a woman who has three children. She gets together with this gent. Of course, this is after the the original spouse will say, all right, let me clarify so this will make sense. You have a couple that gets married. They have three children together. The gentleman leaves either because of divorce or he passes on. The woman still has three children. She ends up taking care of these children, making sure all is well. They are now adult children with their own children. 
She connects with the gentleman. The gentleman says, okay, you're mine, I'm yours. Let's build a life together. And she says, oh, well, I can't spend Easter with you. I always spend it with my children. I'm going to go out of state and see them. Oh, well, I can't do that with you because of my children. Well, I really can't make a commitment long term because of my children. How does this make sense? If you genuinely want someone in your life and there is a heartfelt connection, that means you have to be generous of heart, not just with your family, meaning not just your parents and not just your children, but the person that you elected to have in your world. How do you expect them to stay? How do you expect the relationship to prosper if you don't work together? We really have to give some consideration that, yes, of course, our parents are important to us. When we're older, oftentimes we consider bringing our parents to live with us or we have to make certain arrangements because of illness, because of age. Things change. You would hope that you have a mate, a partner, a spouse who is in alignment with the way that you think and is open to looking after that family member. By the same token... Does it make sense to allow that family member to run the roost? Now, it's just my opinion, but I've seen lots and lots of people over the last three decades plus who come in and say, I don't understand. Why is my relationship not working? Well, what's going on? Who is it that you selected as a partner to begin with? Were you in alignment with the way that you thought back then? I'm sure all of you have heard about the couple that gets married and she wants 10 kids and he wants zero. Oops, didn't talk about that beforehand. And if you're wondering why am I bringing this up, it is truly because way too often I see folks that have spent years and years in a relationship and then find out that their partner didn't change. I want to make a very sincere suggestion and that is if you are seeing someone seriously, you're living with them, you're planning your future together, talk. I know that sounds like something that should be obvious, but it's not. We are taken in by the attraction. We are taken in by the intellect. We are taken in by the way he or she makes you feel. But inevitably, there has to be more than that. It's wonderful if your partner has great humor and they make you laugh all the time when they're not screaming and yelling at you and making you feel bad. It's wonderful that they are very attentive in the bedroom except for when they're flirting with someone else. It's wonderful that they'll look after you unless you don't feel good. Do you see a trend here? What I'm suggesting is don't get attached the moment that you meet someone Don't dive in so quickly that you don't allow yourself an opportunity to get to know the individual you're with. Listen, everyone has good points and bad points. We all have the ability to be the greatest person in the world and the worst person in the world, depending on what's going on with us. If we are preoccupied, if we are hormonal, if a family member is giving us ajita, we all go through a myriad of emotions at any given point. Are you selecting a partner who understands that? Are you selecting someone who, when you're cranky, can actually make you laugh? Are you thinking about the long term in respect to all of its nuances? Really and truly, we take for granted that we come from different worlds, different upbringing, possibly different countries, different cultural beliefs, different religious beliefs, and we expect to just meld. We should meld together perfectly because there was an attraction for some reason. Please, do yourself a favor. If you are in the process of looking for a relationship, listen to that inner knowing. Listen to that divine guidance that exists within you. A lot of times you hear the expression, oh, should have listened to those red flags that went up. What are those red flags? That's the universe's way of connecting and letting you know that something may not be appropriate for you. Listen. Now, does that mean every single little thing should bother you? Absolutely not. The person puts their elbows on the table, but other than that, they're perfect. Hmm. 
Either you learn how to live with the elbows on the table or you learn how to have a conversation and make an agreement. The person steals the blankets at night. Again, see, to me, these are little things that can be negotiated. But it comes down to listen to that inner voice that is inside of you. What is it saying? And I don't mean that inner voice that says, oh, but they make me feel so good. I feel so excited. They said all these wonderful things to me. Or, wow, they picked me. Because you're looking at yourself as less than. Look at yourself as more than. Look at yourself as that person that is choosing you. You are choosing them as well. And if you are choosing them, pay attention to that intuitive voice that lets you know if it's right. And right doesn't mean just in the bedroom. And right doesn't mean, as I said, because of humor. And right doesn't mean just because of a pocketbook. There are certain things that have to feel right throughout. It's how do you feel when the chips are down? How do you feel when there is that family emergency? And when I say, how do you feel? How do you feel with or without that partner support? Is it there? Or have you decided that it's okay and you're able to take care of everything on your own because you're independent and your partner fills certain needs and doesn't have to be there for everything? Because that's an option. The reason I bring this up is because lately it seems as if there is a plethora of people that are coming in with this type of quandary that they've been with someone for years and they thought this was it. Each one of these individuals had been in relationships before. Each one of these individuals had gone through loss. And when they met their partner thought, yes, this is it. This is the person I'm making a commitment to. This is the person who wants to be here. And then they find out, and this is the funny thing, I should say the ironic, they don't really find out they've known all along that the partner perhaps is the type that puts others before them. Really something to give thought to. All right. All that said, I do want to remind you that this is a half hour show on Monday nights. It is not an hour show. A a lot of folks were calling in at the end of the show going, wait, what? No, you're, you're supposed to be on the air. It's from 7 to 7.30 Monday nights. I know it's a little confusing because at one point I was at one day and then another day. We're trying to find the best day for all of you to be able to tune in and to listen. If you'd like a live psychic reading this evening, definitely give a call at 888-565-1470. That's 888-565-1470. Also, if you're on Facebook and you're seeing this live, you can go ahead and write a question in chat. I'll do my best to see my screen there out of the corner of my eye and make sure that I answer your questions for you. We have a lot going on this week, and I say we meaning... Mysteries by Hallie Elise is all over the place. (laughs) Having a ball, though. I am at the office, of course, from 11 to 4, Monday through Friday. As well, you will find me for the Psychic Gallery this coming Wednesday. It is the first one in 2018. I've shared this before, but I will share again. If you purchase an entry, you are welcome to bring a loved one at no additional charge. First time I've done this ever, and I've been doing the Psychic Gallery for about eight years. Tomorrow night, I'll be at Holistic Organic Wellness. We start a brand new program. It's a seven-week series. If you want to come just for one, you want to come for all, you are welcomed. If you're thinking, what? I don't know who's, how, huh? (laughs) How is just the acronym for Holistic Organic Wellness. It is in Boca Raton at 3200, I believe it's North Federal Highway, 3200 on the corner of here, 32nd and Federal Highway in Boca Raton. But you can find Holistic Organic Wellness on Facebook, you can find it on Google, or you can always contact me if you're going, wait, can't find it. Do take a look at hallieelees.com, which is my website. It gives you information about appointments. It gives you information about some of the events. My web guy's a little behind there, but we're trying to get all that squared away. Just everybody's so busy lately. They just... Tonight's busy, tomorrow's busy, Wednesday is busy, Thursday, Friday, believe it or not, I'm at a conference. So things are moving very quickly. We are going to take a short break. Please give us a call at 888-565-1470. And please do so before 7.30. We'll be right back with the Hallie Elise Show. This is 
This is your empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise, one of the top 100 psychics in America. For over 30 years, I have offered psychic readings, programs, spiritual guidance, and other life skill techniques. As our lives have become more complicated, we often reach for answers. Who are we? Where are we headed? Are we pointed in the right direction? In addition, we often are concerned for our loved ones. I have helped thousands of people navigate their life circumstances through different modalities of spiritual and intuitive guidance. Call me at 561-755-2166 and allow me to further explain how I may assist you in clearing the path of yesterday so today and tomorrow will be a success. Call me at 561-755-2166 or visit my site HallieElise.com. That's H A L L E Y E L I S E.com. You have been listening to Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise, a top 100 psychic. She is your connection to all things spiritual, psychic, and empowering, your guide to peace and wisdom. For a private appointment off air, call 561 755 2166. Now, back to the Hallie Elise Show with Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Welcome back. I do want to briefly mention that after this little move from one night to the other, there are some openings for some advertisers. If you have a business that you would like to get attention for, do reach out to me. I'll be happy to give you whatever information is necessary. I'll be candid. The prices are great, really and truly considering radio, FM, AM. And did you know we were on 95.3 FM, 1470 AM, iHeartRadio, Facebook Live, Amp to squared, we're all over the place. You have a huge presence on the internet, including YouTube. Great opportunity if you'd like to get people to your door, whether that is a virtual door or that is an actual storefront in real time. Radio still is the number one in advertising, which is interesting considering we have so much on the web. Paper seems to be going by the wayside. We are still, of course, seeing some things in newspapers, in print, I should say, though really and truly, radio is still huge. And luckily, here at WNN, we have approximately 250,000 listeners between the AM and the FM. That's a lot of listeners. Give some thought if you'd like to join us and become an advertiser. You can always contact me directly or you can call the station and say, hey, I want to advertise on the Halle Elise show and they'll give you information. All right, once again, if you'd like to call this evening for your live psychic greeting, it's 888-565-1470. It's funny, see all that movement behind in <laughs> the other room. There's always something going on here, a lot of fun. Oh, goodness, I got on my... Uh, little soapbox there earlier about the whole romance relationship thing though truly it disturbs me we don't always come from generosity of the heart when it comes to our partners we should i was reminded today about something that i thought was interesting and i'll explain this because it will tie in what i said earlier as far as children parents etc there is a couple i know who had been together they had a child together they divorced they decided several years later to get back together. And when they did, parents on one side decided that they were not going to accept this. This was just not right. They weren't having it. You know, the couple had been divorced. That should be it. And what they did then was they would invite their child and their grandchild out for a meal, but would never invite the partner, the spouse. This went on for years. Finally, their child said to them, you know, this isn't right. We're together. We should all be together. This is the way it is. The parents still weren't happy with the situation. They acquiesced. They had the spouse over and found that it was too difficult. They were unpleasant all the way around. And it's kind of, kind of a shame. If your child is happy in a relationship... 
You don't have to like it. Just be happy that they're happy. And really and truly, the same thing is true for parents. If your parent is in a relationship where they feel loved and supported, allow it. To turn around and say, well, I'll take care of my parent. I'll look after them. It's not really your job. If they have a loved one that's willing to be there for them, allow them to be there for them. All right, I'm off my soapbox. I did get back on, didn't I? But it's just because it seems to be in the air, really and truly everywhere I go. Now, while we're on break, something came in and it's kind of interesting because really and truly, I focus more on empowering individuals. This is why I do keynote speaking. This is why I do so many events. It is not that I don't want to share the intuitive or the psychic. It is that we are very complex beings and there is so much more to us. I like to share things that are relevant in all aspects of our world. Most people go to a psychic for a specific reason. Somebody goes because of their love life. Somebody goes because of their health. Somebody goes because of a move, a job or whatever. Some are known to just give information about world events. Periodically, I will share something, but it's not all that often unless something pops in because my focus again is on the individual. Though as I was sitting here, letting that little commercial run, it dawned on me that there's something brewing in Russia and I'll be candid, I don't watch TV. I do check the news online. I do listen to the radio. I don't bombard myself with negativity by watching the show. And if you're thinking, oh, she's out there, really and truly, I've not watched TV for years, especially the news, because it used to disturb me. So something, though, popped in about Russia. And I'd like to be a little more specific. I feel like there's some sort of undercurrent here, and we're going to be hearing something in the near future about a change within their government that's going to be significant. And when I say in the near future, for me, I'd say within six months. And within means it could be as soon as tomorrow and likely, but it doesn't feel like it would be any longer than six months. Keep your ears open. I'll actually have to get on the internet later tonight and see what's brewing because I don't know. I just know that something popped in about a change in government status in respect to Russia. Feels like it's significant. Something to pay attention to. The other thing is I've mentioned on multiple shows, multiple times over the last couple of years, pay attention to your water. And the reason I say this is because I keep feeling that water is being tainted in places that are not local and in the long run may affect us. And I say may because we always have the ability to purify, to change things. Yet it's important for you to know where your source is in respect to water something to keep in mind. There's always the local stuff that happens, a pipe burst, there's too much chemicals, there's a storm. Make sure you have some good drinking water on hand. I mean, it's always a good rule of thumb in Florida, and I know we're venturing into hurricane season before we know it, but that's not what this is about. It's more about actual water source. I just keep getting an image in my head, and I'll, I'll share what that looks like of water coming, streaming, down a mountain, streaming down a hill, going into something bigger that has been for some reason tainted. And the image that comes in is some wildlife that's been hampered by this water, that's been af affected by it. So again, I'm just gonna say, have an awareness, know where your water is coming from, make sure you have water on hand. I feel like it's very important. Okay, and again, no, typically my focus is more on things having to do with empowerment. Every once in a while I get a phone call about an individual who has disappeared. Thankfully, I've been able to assist in some of these cases, which is a, a really good thing for the people that are looking for missing loved ones. It is not something that I do all the time because really and truly, I do not like tapping into situations that are sad or heinous in some way, and sometimes it can't be avoided. I always tell people when they say, well, how come you don't do that type of work? It's really and truly because you can't unsee what you've seen. Once you see it, sense it, you, you know it, it's kind of in your psyche. Luckily, when I did some work for folks in law enforcement years back, the cases that I dealt with weren't too crazy, which is a good thing. 
And the most recent case, I think I shared, if I'm not mistaken, a, a couple of times was this gentleman who had disappeared from his office and they were looking for him in Palm Beach and he was in actuality in Miami. And again, thank God this turned out well. I was very grateful to be able to help. What I'm trying to get at and why I'm sharing this is just because your focus is on one thing doesn't mean your focus cannot be on something else. Have flexibility. If you, for instance, are an engineer, but for some reason you seem to be pushed towards art, listen to that little voice within that's pushing you in that direction. It doesn't mean that you have to give up what you do. It simply means to honor that part of you that is connected to to that higher consciousness, which guides you. Everyone on the face of the planet has a level of knowing, a level of intuition, whether you call it gut instinct, whether you call it mother's knowing, it doesn't matter what the term is. It's a matter of understanding that at some level, there is a connection that drives you that is more profound than the things that you have learned because it's innate. I have a new apprenticeship student who I just am having such a blast with because she reminds me of me when I was a kid with certain explorations. Older woman, not older as in 80, but older as in not 20, who most of her life has felt different because she knew things. She was affected by things differently. There were certain experiences that came to her that didn't make any sense And since she started studying, she said, she, I just read a note from her earlier today that said she was so happy to gain so much clarity because for the longest time, these things were just sitting with her and they made no sense. If you are finding that there is something that comes into your consciousness, to your awareness, that doesn't seem congruent with the rest of your world, and you're wondering, where is this coming from? Reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to assist you with that. While I'm on that subject, a reminder, again, the Psychic Gallery is this Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. It is at my office building, which is the Greenhouse Offices right on Federal Highway. You can take a look at HallieElise.com. That's H-A-L-L-E-Y-E-L-I-S-E.com for more information. And again, a reminder, you can purchase one entry and actually bring a loved one with you, which is kind of nice. All right, I am going to say one other thing to leave you with, and that is pay attention to those nudges, pay attention to those red flags, pay attention to those gut feelings. You're psychic. We all are. It's just a matter of what level are you listening? I wish you a lovely week, and hopefully I'll see a lot of you on Wednesday or Tuesday, tomorrow, (laughs) and the rest until next week. Have a great week all. Be blessed. Remember to tune in every Tuesday on WNN at 9 p.m. for more peace, inspiration, and psychic phenomena with empowerment psychic Hallie Elise, Top 100 Psychic. The opinions expressed